The hour has grown late and shadows lurk around every corner. The Shermans have left the backyard luau at the Lomans. Little do they know that the Tiki Idol party gift they've taken home with them is made of genuine volcanic stone, and its curse will follow them wherever they go, just as the Hawaiian queen Lulukalani willed it. Several blocks away, little Billy and Susie enjoy swinging in Hammond's Park well after regular bedtime hours. Thankfully, the homing devices implanted in their eyebrows keep track of their every move, just as they do yours. And now, loyal listeners, it is time once again to turn down the lights and turn up the terror. For you are about to open the secret passage bookcase and venture into Frightmare Theater. My loathsome lovelies, welcome to another episode of Frightmare Theater. I am your... I already said that. Excuse me, this is my part of the show. I am the host, after all. I know, but it's a bit derivative, isn't it? I've already introduced the program. Well, yes, but I have jokes. I have jokes, too. Really? All right. Let's hear one. As you wish. Well... Well, I just told one. Didn't you hear? (laughs) It was hilarious. A brilliant one-liner. What? I didn't hear anything. Al? Nothing. Oh, uh, pardon me. I forget that when one ascends to a higher plane of consciousness, the frequencies used in communication are not always received by those of a lower plane. Lower my ass! I don't think your ass can get me lower, Doc. Oh, ha ha, very funny. Almost as funny as this guy's jokes. Can we get on with this? If anything is derivative here, it's you. Well, you wouldn't even exist without... The announcer. Oh, I wouldn't, would I? Correct. You exist only in my reality. I control the vertical. I control the horizontal. Oh, this is absurd. Have you ever asked yourself... Where did I come from? How did I get here? What is this, a Gaia documentary? I don't have to. I was born in... Wayne, Sylvania. Transylvania's long-forgotten and long-ignored sister city. How did you know that? Because I am... The announcer. And it's on your Wikipedia page. Oh, well, of course. That's an easy one. What is the name of my childhood pet? Hmm? Alucard. How did you... Because I am... The announcer. What about my first automobile? A 1958 Plymouth Fury. My favorite type of food? Old lady, dining room table, jaw candy. Damn, you're good. And now we all have access to your PayPal. You're welcome. He's done it again. (sighs) Agnes, hit those keys. We must get this thing rolling. And I must go change my password. And now, boys and ghouls, join us for another journey into fear and madness with tonight's sinister story entitled The Unfinished Blessing. God, I thought I was, I mean, (laughs) I haven't seen anyone so far. (laughs) You scared me with that face mask on, Doc. Will, will you sit with me, please? Mm. Thank you. This is good. (laughs) I need something meaty like this. 
So much has happened, I can't even think straight. <laughs> I have to tell you about everything. And then you need to go to the police. When I first met Wilson, I was moving into my new house down by the old grocery store. Cute little neighborhood, a little west of the highway. I was carrying a handful of stuff inside and before I knew it, my little blue vase was toppling from the top of a box I was balancing. But there he was, dexterous hands cushioning the fall and his chocolate brown eyes meeting mine. Hi. Oh, wow. Hi. Thank you. Well, I saw you from next door. I didn't mean to scare you. Looked like you might need a hand. Thanks. I could actually use some help with a few things. I'm Beatrice. I'm Wilson. I live right over there. Ah, cute little place. Here, that looks heavy. Let me take it inside for you. He was very polite. He told me about how he was a nurse practitioner at the hospital in town and how he felt like that was the most important thing he could do with his life. He told jokes, too. Said he liked to go to comedy shows on the weekend downtown and that he would love to take me sometime. We decided to go the next day for lunch. After some more small talk, I led him to the door. He reached out for my hand and grinned sincerely as he brought it up to his lips. It was great to meet you. I'm really excited for tomorrow. Thank you for sitting with me, Doc. I've never really liked to be alone. I have a dog, Manny. He's a little brown mini poodle about two years old. I got Manny as a tiny puppy specifically so I didn't have to live by myself. He adjusted to the move great. I wasn't sure if he would or not just because of how anxious he can get. That whole day, he did really well. But then, that first night, right about as it got dark, Manny started acting really strange. Your little dog is kooky. My cousin Kate came over to check out the new place, and of course, the first thing she does is make fun of my dog. It's just a new place. He's not used to it. I really think it's a sign. Animals have a sense, you know? Cows get upset before storms. Dogs lay at the feet of people who are dying. Maybe he knows something is bad around here. Maybe that's why he ran out so quick. I don't know. You should let me burn some sage, clear the place up. No. Oh, come on, no harm done. It's not just me. Lots of people burn sage. Priests burn sage. What is that? A tapestry, we can sit on it. I want to set something up for you. I don't know, Kate. We're just going to light some candles on it. I want to make sure you can stay safe in the new neighborhood. You can put it away. There's nothing around here. We have a neighborhood watch. Oh, there's definitely stuff around here. You don't even know. There are bad energies everywhere. Anyway, I'm just trying to look out for you. What do you mean? I'm just trying to get some positive energy into your new place. No. You said there's definitely stuff around here. What's that supposed to mean? You haven't heard the stories about the woods down south, have you? No. You didn't even look into it a little bit before moving here? Tell me, Kate. Everyone says those woods are haunted. That spirits hide in the trees. I mean, I don't know if they do or not. I personally haven't gone to see, but there was this accident a couple of years ago with these two couples who had gone camping down by the mountain ridge. It got the town really riled up. What happened? These two guys were taking their girlfriends on a special trip for a double proposal. And I guess when both of them went down on one knee and popped the question, one of the girls said yes, and the other said no. Her boyfriend went on a rampage, killed the other couple, and chased her through the woods. They found the bodies of that first couple, but that second couple was never seen again. Oh, wow. And they never released all the information. Really? Yeah. They went looking and looking for that last girl. Some say he cut her up into hundreds of little pieces and scattered her around the woods. Some say he stole her away and forced her to live with him somewhere. I don't know how much of it I believe. You better believe it. I bet I could find an article online right now. Yep, here's one. Look, here are some pictures of that girl. The missing one? Well, she's probably dead. Maybe you should have done a little research, huh? I'm going to go check on the dog. Oh, don't be like that. You don't even want to read it? No. Manny? 
Manny! Manny? Kate, I think Manny is gone. I'm gonna have to go out and look for him. If you... Kate, what are you doing? I'm leaving a blessing. What is all this? Some candles on the tapestry. Like I said, tapestries can bring peace. This looks evil, Kate. I told you not to do this stuff in my house. Is that a cross in your hey, hand? Hey, don't. You're going to mess up my candles. I don't want all this where I live. W where I sleep? Beatrice, hey, you shouldn't do that. I'm trying to bless your new place. You've done weird stuff like this before. You cursed Aunt Catherine's hot tub, and now it won't foam up anymore. As much as I'd love credit for cursing my mother's hot tub, I'm really tired of getting blamed for that. And you did some weird spell thing that made Uncle Jack tell his boss he had hemorrhoids? He didn't get fired. It was funny. Manny is gone, okay? I don't have time for your cheap little witch tricks. That little rat dog? If you're not going to help me, you might as well just leave. For real? You're not going to let me finish this blessing? You can't let it end like that. Yes, I can. B, you seriously should let me finish. Are you coming with me or not? Okay, fine. You should really reconsider, though. E, wait. Who is that? What? Who? Shh. This guy over here, what is he doing? You see him? Oh. That's Wilson. The cute neighbor guy? He looks creepy. No, he doesn't. What is he doing? I, I don't know. Why don't you just leave him alone? It looks like he's digging around in the dirt. There, right in front of his porch on this side, see? He has a little garden, I think. Who gardens this late? With no light? Come on, Kate. Please get in the car. I can't believe we didn't find him. You can look for him more in the morning. It's not like him to run off like that. Hey, he's outside still. See him? Who? Your neighbor. Oh. The cute one or whatever? Yeah. I'm rolling up my window. <laughs> You're being excessive. We're in the driveway. You should roll yours up. Stop it. There, on his porch. He has like a coffee thermos with him or something. What's he doing? I don't know. Just standing there. He looks like he's still covered in dirt. Just, just... Staring down at the grass. I'm sorry, B, but this guy's a weirdo. Y you're the one I can't keep from doing voodoo in my house. It's not voodoo. Shh. You better quit making fun of the shit I believe in. Quiet, where'd he go? For real, it's pissing me off. It's not even real. Yes, it is. You can't get me to believe all your Ouija board stuff, okay? It doesn't always solve the problem. If you're so magical, why couldn't you help find Manny? You two were out late. Hi, Wilson. We, we were looking for Manny. He ran off. Your dog? Uh, yeah, I, I actually don't think you got to meet him. Oh, that stinks. Well, I'm a dog lover. I, I would hate to lose my dog. You have a dog? Uh, well, actually, I, actually, I don't. What has you out so late tonight? Oh, nothing. Nothing? You have dirt all over your hands and your pants. Kate! Oh, it's fine. I, I was just picking through my garden. Kind of late at night for gardening. Kate, it's none of our business. No, no, she's right. I have trouble sleeping at night sometimes. I know it's strange, but it helps me sleep when I can't seem to ignore the noises around me. See, I grew up with a garden. I can see why it would look a little strange. Would you like some of my tea? It's very soothing. It helps you sleep. What? No. That's very sweet. Thank you, though. Just wanted to offer. Have you seen a little brown poodle running around at all? Oh, no, no. Trust me, I wouldn't have missed the little guy. Might have more luck in the sun tomorrow, though. I hope so. But hey, I'll see you in the morning. We've had a long night. I'm pretty tired. I bet. Hey, you ladies have a nice night. You too, Wilson. Wow, what a charming guy. You hardly spoke to him. I said enough to him to know. You want some of this tea? He was trying to be nice. A stranger offering you a drink is nice. He's not a stranger. You, you don't even know what he's like. I can tell. Okay, well, I like him. 
gardening in the middle of the night? Why garden in darkness? Bad energies get released hey, that- will you stop it with all the magic bullshit? I just want to have a nice night in my new house. We did have a nice night. It really feels like all this bad stuff with my dog started with you trying to do that witchcraft bullshit in my room. I was trying to do a blessing. Things have just gone downhill from there. You should have let me finish the blessing. I warned you about that, B. All you do is make things worse. And you made things weird with my neighbor, who I am trying to date. I did not. Kate, you should go home for the Beatrice, night. Beatrice, it's late. You always go out of your way to put your nose in everything, and it never helps. You know what? Fine. I don't want to hang out around here anyway. You better take me seriously. You interrupt me. I'm not someone you want to have against you. This stuff can ruin your life if you treat it like it isn't real. I can ruin your life. No wonder Manny left. Oh, good riddance. No more of this bullshit. Oh, jeez. What time is it? I'm coming! Wilson, hi. Sorry, the, the time I was out late and... How are you? <laughs> Good. I didn't mean to sleep in. That's okay. You were out pretty late. Yeah. We never found Manny. Oh, I don't know if you and I should wait to go out another time or... Did you see the mess out here? The me- Oh my god, I'm- I'm sorry, Kate probably did that. Kate, from last night? Yeah, we argued a little bit and she left. She probably kicked my planter over and got dirt everywhere. Oh, damn. Knowing her, she probably cursed it or something, too. She was pretty mad. That sounds like it. Like I said, though, I really didn't mean to sleep this late, so if you want to just- Go home. Well, it's really no trouble if you want me to come in and wait for you. Oh, I, I just got up. I don't think... Well, I really don't mind. Well, I can wait right here on the couch. Okay, if you want, you can sit on the couch and I can get ready really fast. I'm sorry. Please, don't be. So, no luck finding Manny? No, I couldn't find him last night. Damn. It's not too big of a neighborhood. Hopefully no one scooped him up. I hope not. I don't know what I'd do. Well, one time when I was living about 20 minutes away from where I do now, and I had my Great Dane tricks, she got lost and I would have done anything to get her back. Really, anything. I snuck through my neighbor's yard to find her. I hope he's okay. Well, this place is very tasty. Very fresh. <laughs> nice transition. <laughs> But when I'm working with a patient who needs cheering up, I always try to change the subject. Oh, yeah. Do you like your job? Well, it has its ups and downs, just like any career, I guess. I really like being a nurse, though. I can be a bit more personal than a doctor. Not as much money, though. <laughs> Too bad. But here we are at a fancy restaurant with pictures of majestic cows and fields all over the walls. You don't like them? They're charming. Well, I've come here a few times before, and I really like the menu. See, it comes with these little pamphlets that gives you more information on where your protein was raised. So here, I'm gonna get a steak and you can look over and see the town it was raised and slaughtered in. All organic, too. I'm not much of a meat person. The veggies look good, though. Are you a vegetarian? No, but sometimes a bloody steak is just not my thing. Oh, I love veggies. Cucumbers and tomatoes are my specialty. I, I grow them myself. I'll have to bring you some. See, I grew up on a farm and we had these huge gardens. Of course, we had some cows. I helped my dad slaughter and butcher. Nothing can beat a fresh sandwich with fresh cured meat. Now, I have to disagree. A juicy, bloody steak that you've specifically seen and cut, that, that's the good stuff. I'm sorry. You're giving me a look. I try to avoid meat most of the time. I don't like how we treat animals in an already oversized cattle industry. Well, we were very humane about our cattle. Well, they had great lives, and we made sure they never felt any pain. I don't know if I could do that. Raise a cow and eat him. You get used to it. We went to a short comedy set, and Wilson sat quietly through, watching each comedian with a quiet smile, letting out a chuckle every so often, we got back from our date around four with daylight still shining from over the horizon. 
Thank you so much for taking me out. It was my pleasure. I'm sorry if I was weird or anything. I've been thinking about Manny a lot. Manny? My dog. Oh, right. Well, if I see him, I'll have to steal him away so you have to see me again. Oh, he's my baby. You would have to get through me. Well, I'd keep him for my own. You better not. Uh, <laughs> I'm not feeling too well. Uh, can I come inside and sit it out? You're feeling sick? Uh, a little. Oh. What? What's wrong? Oh, it's nothing. <laughs> my cousin was just telling me about curses and stuff. Has me all in my head. Well, I don't know if this is a curse. Uh, maybe just bloating. <laughs> I don't have to come in, but if you insist. I think I'd rather be by myself for the rest of the night. Thank you, though. If I could just have something to settle my stomach? Some water or something? Wilson, you live right next door. You're right. I'm sorry. I haven't been out with anyone in a long time. It's okay. I had a lot of fun. Me too. I'm gonna head inside. I'll see you around, Wilson. I'll see you really soon. After Wilson dropped me off, I went out looking for Manny again without any luck. I decided to get some unpacking done instead of worrying about him. Even then, though, I couldn't keep my mind from the things Kate had told me. I felt bad. I tried to call her to apologize and invite her back over, but she didn't answer. I left a message and swept up the flower pot Kate had shattered on my porch. After that, an uneasy feeling settled over me. I couldn't stop peeking through the window. I couldn't stop checking over at Wilson's house to make sure he was okay over there. I never saw him though, not once for the rest of the day. That night, I was bundled tight in my room. I couldn't sleep. I was tired, but something felt strange, like something had settled on top of the house and all around me. I tried to close my eyes, and that's when I heard him outside. That sounds like... Manny? Manny! Manny! Are you out here? What is that? The fence was all... messed up at the bottom. And to top it off, the little mangled hole at the bottom led right into Wilson's yard. Come on, pick up. Hey, it's Kate. You know what to do. Hey, Kate. Look, I'm, I'm sorry for how everything went down, but I think Wilson might have something to do with Manny being gone. It looks like something dug a hole under the fence or ripped it open or something. I, I don't know. I didn't know who else to call, and I just... I wanted to let you know. I'm gonna go out and look for him. Let me know when you get this. Please leave a message after the beep. Wilson? Wilson, can you come to the door? I know you're home. I can see your car out here. Wilson? Manny? What is that noise? Manny? Wilson? Is Manny here? Manny? Wilson? Wilson, if, if you can hear me, I'm looking for my dog. I, 
I found this space at the end of the hallway. I, I figured it had to be his room. Next to a big king-sized bed was this strange little shrine. It had some rings and, and necklaces. It had candles all around it. Huh, this is a weird little place to put a door. God, who, uh, what are? I was horrified by what I saw on the other side of that door. When I opened it, in front of me on the floor was a wheezing, scarred heap of flesh. A girl. Her sandy hair was matted down her face, sticking to her sweaty skin in greasy tangles. IV cords stretched out of her arms like spider legs, fanned out on the floor. She writhed. Her legs and arms were bent in strange ways. She pulled herself around on the floor and gasped up to me with wide eyes. And that's when I, I realized who she was. The girl from the woods. The girl who said no to her proposer. And now her legs had scoops of flesh missing from them. The fresh wound shining bright with goopy smeared medicine. Did, did someone do this to you? Oh God, you have, can you hear me? Can you take my hand? What are you doing in here? Manny, what are you doing with him? I knew you'd come. Give him to me. I see you've met my darling. This is disgusting. What are you doing back here with her? Well, don't worry about her. Look at her. She needs to go to a hospital. No, she's perfectly healthy. All of her wounds are sterilized. You know, when I first moved her into that room, I had to break some bones and let them reheal so she couldn't get away. I warned her, sweet girl. Well, she didn't listen. You sweetheart, let me help you. Let's fix this. Wilson, you can't do this. You can't keep her here like this. Hun, I've been keeping her here for a long time. Don't look at me like that. This wasn't my intention with her. It just happened. I'd like to test my limits and see what I can do. I'd like to experiment. What can I say? I'm only human. <laughs> her flesh feeds my garden. My garden feeds her belly. An interesting cycle if you watch it. That's not an experiment. That's sick. Don't touch me. Don't come near me. My sweetheart and I need a friend. Someone to play with. I, I really hope that's not weird to ask. Right, sweetheart? Oh, don't look at me like that. It was her idea, not mine. Hey, don't throw him. He doesn't mind. Why? Why do you have that bat? Beatrice, please. I have some medicine for you here. If you take it now, everything will be fine. I can even put it in some coffee for you. No. Don't. Don't come near me. Then to answer your question, my dear, that's what the bat is for. No. No, don't. No. 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 Let me go. Stop. Get back here. No. Beatrice, wait. Help. Help. Someone. Please help. 
please. Someone, anyone. I just have to get home. It's just right there. I just have to call Kate. That's where I can't remember much more. Things kind of stop making sense, but I'm here and safe now. It just, it doesn't feel totally okay yet. It, it doesn't feel resolved. I feel, I mean, I, f I feel like I can still hear her. I know it's crazy. I know it's crazy. I know it is. She's out there still, and we have to help her before it's too late. He's probably moving by now. I, I mean, can you hear that? It's sort of faint, but... And I really think everything must have affected me because I swear, underneath your glasses, you look sort of like someone I know. Maybe sort of like... How are you feeling, Beatrice? You. You. So sorry things didn't go as you planned. I hope our meeting hasn't left a bad taste in your mouth. <laughs> I... I... <laughs> Come on. You could at least laugh. I'm sorry you fell out of bed. You must be in pain with these IVs pulling on your skin like that. Here, you want me to help you back into bed? No. Get away from me! <laughs> Ow! Come on. Let's get those meds back into you, huh? Get you feeling better. It'll all be over in a second. No. No. Your thighs must be in pain. I took some trimmings earlier. You need to rest. You... You what? What did you do to my legs? It's just like I told you. I like all organic. <laughs> she... You... You've been eating her. And you've been eating... My... She's my love. My sweetheart. You're sick. I love her. And I love you. No. Or at least I love getting to know you. Who knows where our paths will lead us, eh? Y you don't even know me. I've gotten to know you more intimately than anyone ever has after those delicious trimmings, Beatrice. More intimately than anyone would ever have the bravery to. And most importantly, I've helped you get to know yourself intimately, too. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh God, the, the food earlier, the food you gave me. Now we can be here together for a long, long time. You, and me, and my sweetheart. You don't have to worry about anything. No, no. Are you hurting? Are you in pain, hun? Beatrice. Okay. Come on now. You want to come back to bed? Get on some medicine. For the pain. Help the pain go away. Kate. Uh, Kate. I left her a message. She knows I came over here. She'll... She'll come looking. She's, she's gonna come looking, and she's going to find all of this. Oh. Hello? Sorry, I knocked like five times. I know it's late as hell, but I'm looking for Beatrice. I didn't know if she stopped by. Hello? Oh. Hello? What a treat. What? No. 
No, you can't. Please. <laughs> Please don't hurt her. <laughs> I wasn't expecting seconds like this. Hello? No. Is Beatrice here? Please. <laughs> don't worry about your cousin at all. Just lie back and relax. <laughs> I just hope you saved room for dessert. Well, I don't know about you, my putrid little pretties, but I'm famished. <laughs> so soon! Oh, well, for those of you out there listening in the dark with weak stomachs, like our station manager, Al, I apologize for my insensitive sentiment. But for you real horror hounds, we hope you enjoyed tonight's terrifyingly tasty tale. For you won't get your fill again until our next noxious episode. And until then, I am your dastardly devious host, Talk to Necropolis, and this has been Frightmare Theatre. <laughs> The Frightmare Theatre Podcast is brought to you by Arcane, where nightmares become reality. Tonight's radio theatre presentation, written, directed, and starring Nicole McLaughlin, featured the voice talents of Andrew McMurtry, Ellen Spann, and Nathan Shelton. The Frightmare Theatre theme and additional music is created by the terrifyingly talented Chris Porcelli, and can be found along with other haunting scores at chrisporcellipiano.com. Be sure to stalk Frightmare Theatre on social media and subscribe to the Frightmare Theatre podcast via iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or your favorite listening app. Producing a monthly horror radio drama is a monstrous undertaking. If you enjoyed feasting on this frightful fiction with us, we invite you to join the Frightmare Theatre Undead family and support us on Patreon, where you will receive members-only special content, including mini-episodes and behind-the-scenes interviews. All previous petrifying episodes of Frightmare Theatre have been unearthed and are proudly displayed for the shock and horror of the masses at FrightmareTheaterPodcast.com. We so deeply wish to thank you for listening and hope you explore the ecstasy of audio terror with us again next month for an all-new episode. Until then, I am the announcer, wishing you pleasant... Dreams. <laughs>